Hello. <laughs> Where is time going? Can you believe it is already halfway through 2023? So I'm here to do the fun and casual mid-year check-in book tag where I answer a series of questions about what I've read so far this year and what I'm looking forward to reading next. I'm going to list all of these questions in the description below. I would love to hear your answers uh, if you want to put them in the comments or if you have your own channel, if you want to make your own video or do your own Instagram post or whatever, looking at all these questions because uh, it's, it's really helpful and interesting, I think, to kind of check in with ourselves about our reading goals and what we're most interested in reading. Now, this obviously isn't meant in any way as a competitive thing of I've read this many books and you've read this many books. No, it is not about that and it's definitely not about being competitive with ourselves as readers because I think more often this is what we do, isn't it? We put pressure on ourselves. I want to read all of these books and I can tell you, spoiler alert, we are not able to read all of the books that we would ideally like to read uh, in the world or in our lives. They're just isn't enough time, but it is helpful, I think, to review the situation of what we've been reading, to give each other suggestions, and to talk about what we're most excited about reading next. So, going through the questions, first off, there is that question of how many books have you read so far in 2023, which is always a bit of a spurious question because obviously, to start off with, there are books of so many different lengths. I've read some very short books and I've said read some very long books. So to add the actual titles up, it, it doesn't really matter. And also reading isn't a competitive thing. It's not about quantity. It is about the quality of the reading experience. But saying all that for the sake of this tag and to answer this question, I did go through tally up how many books I've read so far this year, and I have read 51, which is about average for me. And like I said, some of the books that I've read are really long, multiple hundreds of pages, and some are very short, like under a hundred pages. So uh, yeah, it kind of averages out to that. Question two, what is your favorite book that you've read so far? this year and this is often a difficult question to answer and I have read a lot of really great books that I have loved and felt really passionate about but I can answer this of definitively of my favorite book that I've read so far this year is Solonide by Mersha Kartorescu. Uh, this novel, which is very long, is so expansive in its ideas and in its, in its vision. It's so thought-provoking, made me really consider a lot of different ideas, but it also has a great sense of humor to it and sense of personality to it that I felt like I really got to know this character that he's writing about and the mindset that he's writing in. It veers from very stark realism to surrealism. Um, it gets really wild in some parts. Uh, yeah, so much to say about this book and an author that I've been meaning to read for ages and I realized after having finished it um, that I've had his novel Nostalgia on my shelf for years and I've always meant to get to this as well as his other books. Um, I know a lot of people really highly regard him so I'm looking forward to reading more of his work. Question three, what is the most disappointing book that you've read this year? And I feel bad about saying this. I know I shouldn't feel guilty as a reader. If a book didn't work for me, then it just didn't work for me. But I, I have to say Ghost Town by Kevin Chen, uh, just because I was really anticipating this novel. Uh, it's about a Taiwanese family, and I feel like it was just too ambitious in what he was trying to do in balancing all these different characters' lives and telling this story. Um, some parts of it are very dramatic and there just isn't enough space allowed to show the complexity of this story and it's actually somewhat offensive how the, the shorthand that is used to portray some of these characters and these situations. So I, I really wanted to get on board and support and love this book, but I, I 
just didn't. I read it as part of a uh, book club choice, so it was really interesting to discuss this book. Um, we had a really interesting conversation about it, but yeah, as a whole, it didn't work for me personally. Question four, what genre have you read most this year? And the, the answer for me, as it always is, is new literary fiction. But it's you can't really classify like a lot of the books I read in any one certain genre or category and some of them like in Solenoid it leans more towards surrealism there's like In Ascension which is part kind of a sci-fi book but they're really much more than that in so many of the books uh, some of them are could be classified as historical fiction i think genres really only count for booksellers and publishers and how they classify a book for us readers it doesn't really matter so much it might usefully steer us towards some books that we might have more of a preference towards reading but but actually genre doesn't matter all that much. These categories, the more we look at them, the more they break down. Question five, name a new favorite author that you have discovered this year. Now there is Mersha Kartorescu, who I'd never read before, like I mentioned before, but there is also Ava Baltazar. I read her short novel Boulder and was completely bowled over by it. <laughs> Sorry for my corny joke. I, I love this novel so much and the, the power and poeticness of her writing, but also the in-depth psychology of this complex, in some ways difficult, character she writes about at the center of the book made me want to read much more of her work. Um, so I went out and bought a copy of her previous novel, Permafrost. I've still not read this, but I'm really looking forward to it. And also that these are two books in a proposed um, thematic trilogy that she's writing, so I'm really looking forward to her next novel as well. Question six, what is the most surprisingly good book that you've read so far this year? I feel like this is almost like a slightly shady question of like, oh, I really wasn't expecting that much out of this book, but uh, but I ended up loving it. It's, it's like it's like when uh, I was at a I was out for dinner once um, with uh, with my friend and their mother and a uh, waiter came around and asked how um, we were finding the meal and my friend's mother answered surprisingly it is quite nice <laughs> which is such a shady answer anyway my my answer to this uh, is the birthday party by french author laurent monvignier and uh, this novel it's it's quite long um, because it's such a concentrated story in that it looks at a particular event over a short period of time and analyzes it in minute detail and I thought this would come across as repetitive or slightly dull but once I got into the story and got hooked into wondering what was going to happen in this story. I I kept reading it and made a whole video talking about how I stayed up really late reading this novel because I was so gripped by it. Uh, so it's such a great experience, such a great surprise for me, and I loved it. And also, how did this novel not get shortlisted for this year's International Booker Prize? such a scandal. Question seven, what are your most anticipated releases? Well, a novel that came out a few months ago that I've still not got to, but I have been really wanting to read. I, it's one of those books that's just been on my shelves. I don't know why I haven't read it yet. Uh, it's The Five Sorrowful Mysteries of Andy Africa by Stephen Bororo, and this is about a teenage boy in modern-day Nigeria and his uh, wrestling with uh, friends, with romance, and with religion. Um, I've heard it's quite a comic and enjoyable novel, as well as uh, evoking such a strong voice and sense of place and uh, dealing with uh, a number of compelling issues. So I've been really wanting to read this. Uh, the author Max Porter and Camilla Shamsi, um, they're both big fans of this book. Yeah, really wanting to read it now. Books that haven't been released yet that 
that I'm really looking forward to. Uh, yes, there is a new book of short stories by Joyce Carol Oates called Zero Sum. Uh, my favorite author, always looking forward to what she next. And uh, I love how on the, the proof of this book, there's a kind of Mobius strip and Oates often writes about time in such an interesting way and how that our sense of time you know relates to how we process our existence and so i'm sure she's exploring that in some of these stories there's also i just got a advanced copy of jesmyn ward's new novel called let us descend and uh her writing is so beautiful um how the, the poeticism of her writing and this intense feeling um, that she evokes in her books. Um, this uh, comes with a, a line at the, the, the proof copy of this. Um, there's the line, the first weapon I ever held was my mother's hand. And what a, a way to like draw you into a story. And unlike much of our other fiction, which is a more contemporary set, um, this novel is set prior um, to the Civil War in America. So it's really interesting to um, see how she handles this story. And this advanced copy comes with a note at the beginning, which um, from the, the publisher, who is obviously going to endorse this book, but says, uh, begins it by saying, Dear reader, you're holding in your hand a masterpiece. So very highly anticipated book of a much celebrated author, really deservedly so. So really looking forward to this. Um, it comes out here in the UK in October. Question eight is what is your next big priority for your reading? I have a couple of books that are on my immediate TBR pile. The first is the Fraud by Zadie Smith. Uh, this is another novel which hasn't come out yet. It's coming out at the beginning of September. And sorry to, to be talking about books, you know, that aren't coming out for another few months, but I'm going to be reading this very soon for a particular reason because in uh, just a, over a week's time, I'm going to be interviewing Zadie Smith at a, a pre publication event um, that's just for journalists and uh, members of, of the media to introduce them to her new novel um, that's organized by the publisher. So I'm going to be having a conversation with Zadie Smith in a pub. Um, I interviewed her a number of years ago uh, when her novel Swing Time came out. Um, she's really interesting and lovely to, to talk to. So really looking forward to having a conversation about this book, which I've started. Um, it's fascinating so far. It's Zadie Smith's first historical novel so there's a lot to say about this book and I'm sure we're gonna have a great conversation then also uh, next on my immediate TBR list is Deborah Levy's new novel August Blue um, which I'm reading as part of my physical book club um, so we're gonna be meeting next week to discuss this so I really need to get on and reading this novel about two women um, and how one is kind of a doppelganger for the other so I think there's a lot in it about identity and being identity mixed up with each other and Deborah Levy's writing is really interesting um, so I'm keen to see what I make of her new novel. Question nine is what's your bookish highlight of the year so far and because how this question is phrased I assume it means uh, something around the reading experience or a bookish event rather than looking at a particular title and so for me uh, partly it's been rearranging my bookshelves here in my living room and that's such a, a geeky um, answer but uh, it's it's true. I I'm, I made a whole video uh, talking about rearranging and showing how I rearranged my shelves here, where whenever people come into my flat, these are the first books that they probably see. So I wanted them to represent my favorite books that I've read in recent years. And so I'm so happy now looking up at them. But also I have to say going to the Women's Prize Party and meeting Barbara Kinsolver. Uh, it was such a wonderful experience. And also I made a whole vlog about the experience. So you can go and watch that if you haven't watched that, that video yet. But it was so wonderful meeting her and telling her in person how much this novel meant to me and and pointing out one of my favorite aspects of this book to her of this continuous 
image and desire of demons throughout this book to see the ocean and how this comes to represent um, something so beautiful and powerful in the book of how he is looking to have experiences and live and and see a vision of the world beyond the circumscribed experiences of what he was born into and the the limitations that have been set out into him since his birth to long to know something more of the world um, than what he has seen already um, i think is such a a beautiful message and um, and i was really glad i was able to to tell this to Barbara um, in in person, and uh, we had a wonderful chat. I, I did want to do some video, um, uh, have a video conversation with her, um, um, which she was initially glad to do, but then her publisher stepped in and said, "said No, Barbara, you should really rest." I mean, she's been doing so many events. Um, if you follow her on Instagram, um, you'll see that she's been on this tour for months where she's given dozens and dozens of interviews and it's really endearing how she showed in one photo how she's been living out of a suitcase and washing her clothes in the bathtub in between going to events and showed a picture of of that um, I thought that was really uh, sweet and and obviously shows how she's very down to earth because um, I assume someone in her position could have sent out her clothes to for dry cleaning, but no, she just rinsed them in the tub. And that, that was so great. Um, so yeah, so wonderful to see her win the Women's Prize and um, to get even more prize attention um, for this book and knowing that more, even more readers are going to be experiencing this wonderful novel now. Um, that was, it was so great. And question 10 is, what's a book you started this year and still need to complete? Now I've been fairly diligent about finishing all the books that I've started, or at least the books that I really want to finish reading. There are certain books that I've DNF'd and I'm sticking to my resolution. If I'm not enjoying a book, I, I'm just going to put it aside um, because there's always more books to read, more books to, to get to. But there are a couple of books. Uh, there's Gods of Want by K. Min Chain, which is a collection of short stories. And I've been trying to stick to my resolution too of reading a short story when I first wake up in the morning. It's just a really lovely way to start the day. So I've, I've read a number of stories in this collection like this, and I've been really enjoying them. They're, they're somewhat surreal, um, but also really emotional and powerful. I'm um, looking at, at family and relationships, uh, but uh, quite a unique writer. Um, but I've kind of, I've not been doing it recently because there've been other things I've been having to do and that is fine to not stick to resolutions like that, but I've been really wanting to finish this collection. Um, I'm also currently reading Linda Grant's novel, uh, The Story of the Forest, which is a really interesting historical novel about a uh, young, uh, a, a girl in um, Latvia and her becoming awakened to a political understanding, but also moving out of the country um, to Britain, um, following her and her brother's journey. Um, it's quite an interesting story. I'm not quite sure how I feel about it so far, but I'm really intrigued and I enjoy lots of aspects of Linda Grant's writing and this story in particular, so I do want to continue with it and finish it. So hoping to get to that. And then finally, I'm um, just to, uh, it says the, the final question is, who do you tag um, to do this? tag um, and answer all these questions and and I, I tag everyone. Um, I, I really love to know there. There are so many booktubers I follow. I would love to know their answers, but also um, people that watch my videos. I'd um, love to know your answers. Um, like I said in, in the comments below, if you want to answer some or all of these questions, if you want to make your own video or post um, responding to this tag, um, or if you just want to answer briefly um, in general how your reading year has been, I would love to hear about that. Um, so please uh, let me know. Um, let's have a discussion about it. Um, I always love hearing about you and your reading progress and your reading highlights and your reading disappointments. Uh, but I hope you're doing well and reading good things. And I will speak to you again soon. Bye-bye.